to death and aliens an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi tv from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing i'm courtney and i'm mk and how are you i'm okay um i uh yesterday was mine and dan's two-year anniversary i saw that it was wild um but we uh we went to the zoo um because the zoo does this thing at, um, in the summer where they have all these like really cool like lights up and they call it zoo imagination and it's like really cool like uh, light like features and like they're, like they're like they're they're like like sculpture exhibits basically of like different animals and stuff but they're illuminated um, and they're really really cool so we went to that uh, and it's nice it, but it's we picked the wrong weekend because it was too hot and too close to the longest day of the year. So the sunset was really late. Yeah. Rachel told me I can't go to the zoo right now because it's too hot. I keep asking. <laughs> well, and I mean, so the, the way they do zoo imagination is it's after hours. So the animals are inside. Anyway, mm-hmm. they're not they're None of the animals are visible except for like the vultures and the eagles because they live outside. Um, so like they're right. Um, but um, Carson, the eagle, is my friend. And every time I go and talk to him, he looks at me and Dan thinks it's so weird. He's like, do we have to go see your eagles? And I was like, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, but so, A, I want to go when the zoo is actually open. But B, because it was so hot and the sunset was so late, like the illumination part of the lights was like cool, but like could have been better. So we'll probably have to go again some absolutely. other time. Yeah. But but it was really really nice um and the theme this year is like um african and asian animals so they had like um a bunch of like african like animal exhibits that were really really cool and then they had like a whole like chinese new year thing where they had all the like mythical chinese animals and the like zodiac chinese animals and everything but because of that like the the giant like entrance display is of pandas so i was very happy i love it panda so, Love that. Um, it was it was nice. That's so nice. But, um, I'm getting a little bit of feedback from your mic. I don't know if it's like turned up too hot or like. Oh well, I don't know. I can't hear anything, but my mic's also been like popping in and out of whether it works today or yeah. not. So who knows? It's just a little a little hot. I don't know. Well, I t- I turned it down a little bit, so we'll see. Okay. But, it's a little bit better. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm uh making it. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> speaking of, we were just speaking of schedules. Um, in the in the interim, um, I forgot. I but we booked our cruise. Oh, good. Yep. So uh, we booked it officially. Officially paid for it. Got it all squared away yesterday. And um, nice. so I'm very excited. Me and Rachel are doing another Virgin Voyages. You know our faves. Um, and we're doing it the last week of July, so it's gonna, we're actually not going to fall on a Monday, so it should not affect our schedule because it's a Wednesday through Sunday. So we'll be nice. back home before Monday. Um, but I could not be more excited because it is the Eats Festival, which means there's like extra food and Ooh. it's best. Anyone who's been on a cruise knows that's the best part of the cruise <laughs> the food. food galore. Um, Oh, the version has a lot of other fun stuff too. And like the no kids thing. That's really great. Um, big fan. So I'm just looking forward to that. I've been trying to like plan out all of my my traveling and keep my body from falling apart because I'm just having a rough week with my body this week. Um yeah. overall. I am I don't I didn't know. People are like, one day you're gonna wake up and just like hurt and it's never gonna stop. And I think I'm there. I think yeah. we made it. Yeah, no, and that really I, sucks. I mean, the fact that it didn't happen immediately on the day after your 30th birthday is kind of rude, know. but like, um, you know, well, I've always had like, like my shoulders have hurt since I was like 17 because of tennis. So like, I have things that have hurt forever, but like a new hurt yeah, did not happen until recently and it sucks. So now I'm trying to get into my like health food vibe and just ordered way too much press juice. Sorry, I'm going to do my first juice cleanse. I'm just doing a day. I'm not crazy. I, d- I think it's terrible for your body to do like a really long juice cleanse. Oh, yeah. Um, But like one day is okay, especially when you like don't feel well. And I love all of press juiceries or uh, yeah, 
Yeah, is that the one I get? Press juicery. I think that's I don't what, know. That's what you said. So to that's, me this morning. That's so. that all that doesn't always mean that's true, but that is probably <laughs> what I said too. Um but it's my favorite when they have the best green juices and they just make your body feel better. And so I'm going to. My problem is that. all of the nice gut health smoothies. I can't fucking have them. Mm, these don't have any seeds. These are veggies. The veggies mostly. They don't have like any type of fruit. So I bet you could have these. Yeah, it still depends. Dan made himself a gut health smoothie the other day. And um I have way too much ginger in it. I was like, I can't, I'm sorry, mm. I can't. I just, I smell the ginger and I want to die. Um, this one he, doesn't, I don't think has ginger in it. I think it's, it's, but it's the very, it's like the most basic level. I got the mm. most basic cleanse yeah. because it's, it's like spinach and celery and mm. then like a little bit of like black pepper and turmeric, I think. So it's got uh-huh. like the stuff you need for gut health, but it's not, no seeds and it's not nice. overly powerful. It is mostly tastes like, it mostly just tastes green. So, um, the immunity boosters I got are like heavy and ginger and turmeric. So those you might not love, but yeah. um, no, but every time I'm juices. like, every time I look at like great protein and like gut health things, it's like a banana or yeah. berries or chia seeds or oats. And I'm like, just one, just one that just I could drink. That'd be great. Go green, go green. That's the one Um, I'm telling you. Cause I think the most, and especially like the most fruit, let me get into this apparently. Um, yeah. <laughs> The, the fruit that I usually see if it's going to be in a green one is usually apple. Mm, and I can have that. That's so, fine. yeah. So like, and I, they don't all have that, but that's usually the one I see is apple. And then it usually has like lemon juice. Um, so that's, you know, safe, safe for MK. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking but at yeah. this place now. I love it. Um, don't order delivery. It's stupid. It's insane. I, felt really sick yesterday and was like I have to have this and so I've made it I'm two weeks I'm gonna have a nice two-week cleanse before my cruise where I just drink so much green juice um it is because I used to do that's what I had that's how I made it through um law, law school in New York it was because every Thursday I would go get a green juice and if I also started feeling a little bit sick I would get an immunity booster and I didn't get sick in law school and new york like i was unhappy i was depressed but i wasn't sick <laughs> see i and can't then, i can't do their green juice because it has cucumbers in it not the celery one it doesn't oh, have cucumbers okay. it's very basic it's it's uh so i think it's just celery and spinach or maybe celery and kale it's a leafy green and celery mm-hmm. and then like lemon juice and okay. such but i don't think it has all that in oh. there oh, okay yeah no greens one is cucumber celery. Yeah. no greens one is cucumber celery Maybe it's greens too. Down also. I don't know what I got. Where is my checkout? Where can I see what I've ordered? That's what I need to tell. And then I can tell you because I think because I like that one. I like the one with cucumber and I like the one. No, and I think that makes sense. Cucumber is like. But I don't think that's the one I got. Mm. That's what I'm trying to say. I think that I got something totally different. Um, But. Yeah, I I just love it so much. Um, it makes me feel like I'm not dying, and that apparently is a a big thing to ask. Um, yeah, this one's just celery and lemon. There's a celery juice that's just celery and lemon, and then um, yeah, and that's that's the one I got. I got the seven day celery cleanse pack, and it's mm-hmm. just celery and lemon juice. So it doesn't even have a leafy green in it. I was wrong. <laughs> but, uh, and then I got the immunity booster to like pair with it. Mm. So you could totally do this one. Um, but yeah, that's how I made it through law school. And then when I was working at Tierra, we had a Gregory's downstairs and I would get their uh, turmeric latte, which I loved. Um, and they would put the black. I just lost your mic again. Yeah. I see that. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. Um, I didn't even do anything. Like, I didn't even breathe on no. it. Yeah, no. It's just there. Um, But, yeah, so I – and I do miss that. That's the one thing that I miss in New York. It's like, I'm sure there's juice places here, but it's just not the same as, like, walk downstairs and grab whatever I need to yeah. not feel like I'm dying. So, now yeah. I've ordered two weeks' worth of it, plus a lot to try. So, okay. <laughs> I'm going to be so health forward next time I'm here. <laughs> um, In the meantime, while I'm not – Feeling up to par. Can you uh fix that? 
I would love to. I, it's going to take me a second because I fucked up and looked up the juice cleanse and now I have to find my <laughs> thing again. Because yeah, why I feel that. would I ever have? I swear I've saved this page like 15 times. Yeah. And oh, they also do like a mushroom coffee, a mushroom cold brew that's supposed to be like health forward too, that doesn't have any weird seeds in it. But it's, I haven't had that yet. I ordered it, but I haven't tried it yet because okay. it's not here. So I'll let you know how that goes too. So they have other stuff like that. And they have like matcha stuff, like that's not just green juicy. Yeah, I saw that. They have, and they have so. a lot of fruit stuff too, which is nice. It's, I really wish I knew I could be healthy without being worse for myself than it would be to just be healthy. Yeah, I feel like Pressed has a lot more options in a lot of places because a lot of places do put bananas in everything. Yeah. Which is like, like, I like bananas. They don't kill me, but like, yeah. you can. <laughs> no, every time I like look up recipes to like make it myself, mm -hmm. I'm like, I have a blender. I could just make smoothies. Like Dan has like a juicer and I'm like, we could do this. And then I'm like, oh, no. Every single one of these recipes. Um, I'll give I'm, you some stuff. I like every time I find a recipe, a website that's like 14 great breakfast smoothies. Anytime I find it, yeah. only one of them ever am I yeah. able to. And I don't usually like those that much. I'm going to, I'm missing you some stuff. You can get, switch to turmeric. Get the turmeric ones. They're great. Turmeric is so strong. No, you, no, it's just a, it's just a strong color. You mix <laughs> it in with black pepper. That's what activates yeah, but it. I don't, I, I and then just, you put it. In milk, I've got so many. No, you just. I don't, hold your I don't want to. I don't want to drink something that tastes like turmeric and black pepper, though. Like that. It's tastes... not going to. No, we're going to put other stuff in there to man cover it. Okay, I'm telling you, lemon juice cuts a lot, and then there's so many things. Green, yeah. all the greens. You know what? Lemon juice doesn't cut when you put too much ginger. I mean, <laughs> well, we're not putting ginger. I'm not a huge fan of ginger either. I will drink it because I do know it makes me feel better. Yeah, but like I usually don't put a ton of ginger, in it. so if any. All right. I wish there were a rule book for intimacy, some kind of a guide that could tell you when you've crossed the line. It would be nice if you could see it coming. And I don't know how you fit it on a map. You take it where you can get it and keep it as long as you can. And as for rules, maybe there are none. Maybe the rules of intimacy are something you have to define for yourself. Mm. That's nice and true. Yes. Because everyone's different. Everyone sucks equally. Everyone sucks equally. That is 100% true. Um, including our friends from the cast of our show Hannibal, which we are speaking about today. Um, which is very fun. Can't wait. Um, <laughs> we are talking. I, I feel like I'm dying. I'm okay. Though. Yeah. But okay. if I speak slower or crazier, that's why. Um, we are talking about Hannibal season one, episode 10, Buffet Freud. And it aired May 30th, 2013, and was rated 8.7 out of 10, which is higher than last week by a little bit because we, we started going back up. Yeah. Yeah, it was 8.2. And so now we're going to going back up, it seems. Um, number one song is still the same. Number one movie is still the same. Number one book is Inferno by Dan Brown, um, which I bought immediately after reading Demons and Angels yeah. and Demons and then did not read. So I'm sure it's wonderful, but there's no way to know. Um, on this day, there was a lot of, uh, it was a weird day. <laughs> Let's start there. Mm -hmm. um, Adam Levine was called communist on the social medias and then tried to joke about it because he was like it's not that serious and apparently almost got canceled for it and he had to come out and apologize and be like look guys i'm not communist for real for real and <laughs> i'm sorry that i joked about it like i don't i didn't read what happened so it may have been bad it could have been good i don't know wow. but you know that was just such a strange thing but that was like the top news story that day um then we also learned that that was when grumpy cat was announced to start a movie did that movie um, ever happen? I don't think so. I was trying to figure it out. I was like, I don't think this actually happened. I don't think it did. But that's that was also one of the big news headlines that day. Um, and last, but certainly not least, <laughs> let me remind you, we are in 2013. Nigeria passed a law banning same-sex marriage. 
So they were like, oh, America has turned around. We're getting into the Obergefell era. And they were like, we're not going to do that. We're going to go the opposite direction of what you've done. So what a time. What a time. I'm sure we're soon to follow. Um, Our director is John Dahl, who is new. And he is known for a lot of stuff in like late 80s, early 90s. That was his real heyday. Okay. So he was known for The Last Seduction, Kill Me Again, Rounders, and Red Rock West. Um, I've only heard of Rounders, but I have yeah. not seen any of them. Same. Um, but he is also known for some stuff a little more recent. It's just not his like known for. Yeah. Um, but he directed a few episodes of Evil, which we may talk about on this podcast one day because it is super horror and no, Spooky. my my dad has said that when we finished Hannibal, that needs to be what we do next. He's so it's, into it. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna be done by then. That was kind of my that was my hang up. Season it is like the, season four is the last season. They've announced. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah they've announced that season okay. four is the last season. So then, yeah. So hold your horses, guys. That might be the next one we do because I was also thinking it would be a great one because yeah. it's a different type of horror yeah. and a lot of different elements we've never spoken about. <laughs> the trailer for season four. I never watched it, but the trailer for season four was wild i was so um, i only watched the first half of the first season and it is creepy as hell <laughs> but it's gonna be really good and i have a fun story that i have to tell you off air i just realized so <laughs> never mind everyone you don't get to know um he's also worked on jessica jones which i love jessica jones i have not yeah. caught up but i i love the first season um the strain another show we might end up talking about yeah uh, so we may revisit him a few times. Right. Um, Dexter, the original Dexter. And as you know, with directors in the show, they have to have worked on a music video at some point in time in their lives. So nice. our friend John Dahl worked with Cool and the Gang. Oh. Um, which I also probably have a story for you all. <laughs> That's fine. Wow. I need to hang out with John. Swap some stories. Um, and then a couple fun facts. He produced a 30-minute rock musical called Here Comes the Pugs Duh. with another director that I've forgotten. I meant to write him down, but I forgot. Um, he is BFFs with Francis Ford Coppola. Um, right, yeah. he, look, me and John need to just have a hang. Yeah. He was Bill Pullman's drama student. Okay. Um, and in case you were wondering, his last name is spelled D-A-H-L, but he has no relation to Roald Dahl. So that's that's our friend, my new bestie, John Dahl. Um, it was written by Brian Fuller. He actually did write on this, not just create the concept, but he write he wrote on this one with um Chris Brancato, who we've talked about, yeah, and Andrew Black, who we have not talked about, but he is known for Narcos, Gemini Division, Daybreak, and Dirt Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Because everyone who's ever worked in horror has apparently worked on that show too. Yeah. Um, Which I don't think is a horror show. It's not. I watched it. It's like, I mean, it's like mystery, but it's like comedic mystery. It's not yeah. even like, there are no horror elements. Like, that's, yeah, that's, is, that's what I was, that I haven't not watched it, but I was it. under the impression that that's what it was. Yeah. And I, I haven't watched all of it, but I watched like three fourths of it. Like, I would have, I would have known by now if it was. Yes um it's good you should watch it but yeah. um he also worked on he also <laughs> shrek to the video game so dead fun fact um i couldn't find a lot of other fun facts because someone with the name andrew black is not someone you're finding on the internet right um, right, right right so <laughs> so that's all we know about him um and then our editor was michael doherty who we've spoken about before all right let's see if i remember this episode we flash back to all of Will's breakdowns. So you know we are like yeah. coming up on that. Um and then we pop over to Greenwood, Delaware. Cause Okay. Why not? Was this my imagination or was this the longest unrelated to anything we've seen cold open so far in the show? It was a hundred percent the longest. Like usually when I write my notes, I have the credits are like here and they are here. Like, I was like, and I was watching this. Granted, I was also watching this while I was cleaning out my classroom the other day, like at school. And I was just watching this. And I was like, I I know that I put Hannibal on. Like I know that the 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 lighting, the vibe, everything like is telling me that I put the right show on. 
But we're a solid three minutes into it and I haven't seen anyone I know. And I don't know anything that's going on. Um, oh my God. I forgot to talk about our guest star. Oh. I ran out of room on my first page and so I had to put it on my last page and then completely forgot because fun fact, you did see someone that you know, kind of, um, because the person who I'm not talking about today, because we've already talked about them, is Georgia, who is played by Ellen Muth. I knew that. Yes. And so who obviously also played Georgia in the show we've already talked about. So. Which weirdly, we talked about the fact that her character and Hannibal was also named Georgia when we talked about her in Dead Like Me, but that, I that was a hundred years that. ago. Yeah. Um. So our <laughs> guest star that we're talking about today is John Benjamin Hickey, who plays Doctor Sutcliffe. Because obviously, John that's Benjamin what Hickey. Why do I know that name? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> it's known for. Transformers Reverse of the Fallen, Flags of Our Fathers, The Taking of Pelham 123, and The General's Daughter. However, he is also in Gossip Girl. And you have seen him probably there. I have seen him in Gossip yeah, Girl. I'm, I'm not sure I know I him from. He's been in about a thousand other things. So you've seen him in something. But Gossip Girl is where I knew him from. He is. He also won a 2011 Tony for The Normal Heart. So you may know him from that time. Right. Um, And then his partner is Jeffrey Richmond, who is the producer of Modern Family and Frasier, the original Frasier. So like, he's also guest starred in all of those things and like has done a lot of guest star spots. Um, Oh, you know what? He was in um, the world premiere of The Inheritance, the play, mm -hmm. the Matthew Lopez play in The West End in 2018. There you that, go. Yes. That is the last place I would have guessed, but that is no, place. um, but 2018, I was that was um about the time that I was like like 2018, 19, 2020. That's when I was like obsessively watching every single YouTube video because I was in Thailand, mm-hmm. so I couldn't see yeah. shows. So I was right. like obsessively watching all of Playbill and Broadway.com's everything that they did because I was like, I can't see any theater, so like let me watch every YouTube video that was ever made about theater. So yeah. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. I just <laughs> I knew him a long time before then. And so that's no, what I was but, which I know his face from other things, uh-huh. but his name, for some reason, the name John mm-hmm. Benjamin Hickey was like sticking out to me as a that name that I have heard re- like, and that's why. Yeah, because I did not know him by name before this, but right. I know his face before this. Exactly. Yeah. No. That's also why I didn't connect the fact that I watching him on the screen was a name that I knew because the the name and they the, were not the same they're not this they weren't connected in the same way the p- face right. absolutely recognized from gossip girl the name recognized from something very different <laughs> very different yes <laughs> um yeah yeah so back into it correct they're cold and you don't recognize anyone also it we don't actually see ellen within the scene no um she is very we see her hand um yeah i feel like that we don't see her face for real until like the last six minutes of the episode yeah because we see her but we don't we wouldn't recognize her until she's in the container yeah um but yeah so we go to this woman's home she has arrived home and we start seeing like flashes that look like someone is there like we see the shed it's like oh someone's in the shed and then we go inside and she's like doing her random her like regular routine but she'll go to like touch something and it's like this isn't quite right. Yeah. You, you just like can feel that as she's going through. Um, she checks on her little bird. Um, all I could think was for your sake, I hope this bird didn't die. The bird didn't die. I think it was yeah. probably released, but it did not die. So yeah. we're all good. Um, and then she's upstairs and she's laying in bed and we start seeing like water dripping from the ceiling. Now, let me tell you, this is the most inaccurate water dripping scene i've ever seen thank you i was so taken out of the episode because i was watching it and i was like zero zero percent chance in any way shape or form in any movie in anything i've seen in real life in anything would the water drip a happen as fast as it did yeah. and b spread as fast as it did that was demonic possession like there was like there was right 
There was nothing about that house that the water dripping was anything other than a demon spreading through the ceiling because absolutely. No. I've had, I lived in New York. I've had so many waters coming through ceilings. Cracks. Listen, when I are really are not my, the house we used to live in, the house we lived in when I was a really little kid that we had a really rough time and the landlord was not great. I had a, like a, a leak in my bedroom ceiling from the attic. Of course, it also happened the same year that the movie Dark Water came out. <laughs> and I had watched Dark Water in the movie theater and then went home and there was a corner of my ceiling that was like dripping. And so like, I have all kinds of psychological issues about that. But I literally had a bedroom that had a, a constant patch yeah. in this, this ceiling. Um, the patch didn't grow in the two years that I still lived I was going to say, house. I spent the last two years of my apartment, the last apartment I was in, thinking my bathroom was going to fall in any day. Yeah. And it never did. And I was, no. It was two years that I was concerned Correct. about. Correct. Um, but yeah, so this was insane. I was like, oh, maybe there's a body up there or demonic possession. Because sure, maybe if there was a dead body dripping blood, I don't know, maybe it would fall faster. That wasn't my situation. Right, um, right. Then, I, unfortunately, I mean, <laughs> luckily, it wasn't what I was experiencing. Right. Um, but then we go upstairs and it's just the window's been left open and snow has come in. And I was like, that's that's not even gonna do anything you're not gonna know snow has come in the like, science the science of that like no no it was wildly wildly inaccurate but but we move on from there and we just accept that it's wrong <laughs> um and so she goes upstairs to look in the attic because she just just also also her reaction i'm sorry i'm not moving on yet her reaction was completely inaccurate because again i spent the last two years panicking my ceiling was going to fall in it wasn't even dripping there was just a crack that looked like it was going to fall in this woman has massive water falling from the ceiling and she's just like i guess i'll get out of the bed and go see what's going on and also like you think someone's in your attic or you think something's happened in your attic and you're just casually going up there in the middle of the night no flashlight no weapon no yeah absolutely i was just like this woman okay so yeah just but then also across her, the board. also then her her reaction to what it actually was where she was like a giant patch of my ceiling my roof is missing and there's snow in my attic oh this sucks i guess i'll tape some window sealant up and go back to sleep right no no, no. Right. i would be on the phone with my dad crying about my roof faster than you can say boo like what yeah. the fuck was her reaction also it didn't look like it was like damaged because like too much snow and it like started breaking in like it right was it, it wasn't it, was, it wasn't like did that it wasn't collapsed and <laughs> it wasn't like the panel blew off there wasn't wind right. it was just bro like someone did that that is a person's action yeah i wow i was <laughs> distraught i didn't her care i didn't care that she died because i was so confused and angry for the whole first like yeah. five minutes of the episode totally fair yeah and then we see which she does not see this part so i guess there's that at least that we see footprints on the roof on the top of the roof and which does that not. again still could have been demonic possession because who the fuck is on your right. roof yeah no absolutely and it kind of a little bit was um but <laughs> We, yeah, so we see the footsteps and then she goes downstairs. Before anything happened, I knew we were about to get our classic horror scene. Oh, yeah. Of someone being dragged under the bed. And that is like, we, uh, this is horror. We have seen some horror stuff. That is the most classic horror scene we have had this season so far. Yes. Because for sure. That is how it always goes. And that was actually really well done and really well shot. And I was yes. very pleased no, with it its was execution. 100%. Um, 100%. But that's it. That is it from this first part that was correct. <laughs> so kudos one time. Um, and then we go over to our friends, Hannibal and Will. And they're talking about Abigail again. And they're talking about how, you know, she killed Nick. Now that Will knows, he wants to talk more about it. And Hannibal is trying to tell him, he's like, you're not like, you're grieving all these different things and you're grieving your life like you're not even connected to everything that's going on yeah and because will's obviously losing his mind and we learned that he has lost more time and had more hallucinations because Hannibal will ask him outright about it um and so yeah. he gives him back the the clock again 
um, to do the drawing of the clock to see where it kind of lines up. And, oh, no, this is the first time <laughs> he hands oh, yeah. him a piece of paper to draw a clock. And he's like, you have to to make sure you're still in present time. You want to state these facts. You want to say your name. You want to say where you're located. And you want to say what time it is to ground yeah. yourself. Yeah. And so he does all of this. And he's like, and now I want you to, like, draw this clock while you're doing it so you can, like, put the time on the clock. And it's just kind of, like, more grounding. Yeah. Um, and so he does. And he gets it, you know, all right. He's like, these are the things. This is where I am. And then we go to Hannibal, who's taken the clock, and it is completely off center. It is. It is so not what he saw. Yeah, no. What he, no. what Will saw, and what Will thought he drew. His spatial awareness is so yeah. wrong that, like, he drew everything he said he drew. He drew a clock and all the numbers and the hands. They're just not where they're supposed. Where to they be. go? Yeah. yeah. And then we get the credits. <laughs> Thirty minutes in, we get the credits. Right. Um, it was yeah no that was definitely the longest opening we've had um, for this show at least um, it's possible we've had longer ones before I don't I don't recall it's been too many days since then so then we go to Will's house and he's been out fishing and he's going to cut the fish and turn and the fish is bleeding too much and he starts seeing like the bodies and that's when we realize that it's not really his house that he's picturing. Um, in his brain because he's flashing back to see the dead woman that we saw die um and he panics and he's had his hands on her and he walks out of the room covered in blood and the whole fbi team is already there turns out he did come with them yes, so he no. was meant to be there because at first i was like i don't think he did this but did he is this are we seeing this break already like right i was like i was like did he did he literally fucking lose it yeah like and, what, um, his his uh his sleepwalking he climbed onto somebody's roof and broke in and killed them what the fuck right which would not have been out of all the other things that were wrong would not have been out of the possibilities yeah and so it did take me a little second to like orient and i was like no no yeah. he came with them they knew he was there but now he has completely messed up the crime scene um which obviously was not what they anticipated but at least they did know he was there he was yeah. to be. um and so then everyone kind of like leaves the building or whatever. And he goes and like cleans himself up and he goes outside and talks to Jack and Jack's like, what's going on? He was like, I've never seen fear quite like that. Like you won't, you weren't yeah. only like losing it. You weren't only going in too deep. You were so afraid. Afraid. Like, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? Like what's happening? Yeah. And he's, and he says, he's like, like I see better and hear better when I'm afraid. Like that's what kind of like, which pff, terrifying right terrifying wild um and he tells him he's like i thought that you know i killed the woman he was like i thought for a minute that i had done this and he's like no like you messed up the crime scene but you we brought you here you didn't do this and um jack i was like he should be way more concerned than he is and he does say he's concerned but yes. like he should have been concerned two months ago like right no and he's just like do we like what are we gonna do about this and he's like have i broken you first of all yes but second of all <laughs> he's like will says do you have anyone unbroken who does this better than me broken and i was like again so sad that is so like so upsetting so upsetting yeah true but so upsetting um and so then of course we get into the killer a bit and he's like the killer knew her um we can't find really accurate fingerprints because Will's contaminated scene, but we're trying. And then he says the killer didn't bleed because we learned that she had grabbed the killer enough to like get, you know, the um, skin under her fingernails and everything, but there was no blood. blood trace. And so they have to figure out what's going on there. And we also learned that she had just, like started having her face pulled off and he's like, it was, that whoever the killer was was trying to pull off the mask because they didn't see this person like as a real person it looked like it, they had a mask on yeah um and so then we go to Hannibal and Will and Will is talking about his like deterioration again and he's saying that he knows he did not kill this woman but he remembers killing her and he's like it's not great that I'm having memories that I right. know aren't real but I can picture them so vividly um Oh, 
Okay. And um, so he's like, I'm having, he's like, it could be seizures. It could be a tumor. It could be a blood clot. Like these are all things that could be contributing to what's going on. Yeah. Um, and Hannibal's like, I'll recommend you a neurologist. Like I'll find you a good doctor to check you out. Yeah. But if he says it's not physical, then we have to deal with the fact that it's not physical and it's all psychological. Yeah. And Will's like, absolutely. hundred percent. I'm in. And uh, so we go to the neurologist, immediate gratification, <laughs> go straight to this neurologist. Correct. And um, the doctor is telling him, he's like, yeah, he's like, I would trust Hannibal with anything. Like, I'm glad he brought you in because he is the, and I quote, sanest person I know, which is terrifying <laughs> yeah. because he's not um That's and so will starts telling him he's like i don't remember when everything started like it just kind of started coming on gradually and then all of a sudden it was like really bad but i don't remember exactly when um and so will goes to get in the mri machine and as soon as he like starts going in the machine hannibal's like it's encephalitis <laughs> the doctor's like right. excuse me and so he's I like smell it on him yeah. And he's That's like, first terrifying. the cancer and now encephalitis. And he's like, yeah. oh, for sure, for sure. Um, so he brings the picture over and it's like the entire half of, like, of his brain is inflamed and red. So it's like pretty far in. It's not like right. he found, he got it yesterday. Like this is pretty far in. Um, and then, so Will goes to the MRI machine and he starts picturing himself under the bed. He's having the memory again of him being the one yeah. under the bed. And this is when we see the picture of the brain and we learned that it's anti-NMDA encephalitis. So here's where I took a break and asked a lot of questions to my psychologist doctor and my medical doctor <laughs> that I have on hand. Right. And I learned more about these things. And so I was asking Nick about what it actually means. Like, what are the symptoms? What yeah, can you see from this? And so with this type of encephalitis, it is more about behavioral than actual um, psychological issues. And it can start with some psychological issues as it starts deteriorating. But like, you're not going to see memories of things that don't exist you're not going to necessarily lose time. It's going to show more in your behavior. Spatial awareness is not a part of it. So these are all things that they've decided to include in this that are not quite right. Um, and so he was like, it's definitely something obviously, but like, it's not that. Um, and then I was talking. So then we see Hannibal tells the doctor that we're not going to tell him it's this. We're going to tell him it's psychological. So let's keep the secret. And the doctor's like, Sure. Okay. Whatever. Which is also distressing because yeah. now what have we done? What have we done in the past with this doctor? Um, so then I asked Rachel, yeah. <laughs> my psychologist, about her take on it. And I was like, so here's the thing. They have all of this that's clearly physical, yeah. um, causing a lot of issues. What could they say that this is psychologically like? Because what would make you lose time, hallucinate? And I was like, of course, I think like DID, I think schizophrenia, maybe like all these things where you have a different personality that comes in and like steals time from you, basically. Yeah. And um, I was like, that's the only things that I could really think of. But I was like, but do the memories play into that at all? Um, and she was like, I have not heard of anything that like replaces memories in that same way. Okay. Like, so you may I, have hallucinations. I don't, know, I don't know what Nick's specialty is, but I know what neurology. <laughs> okay. Well, because no, no, no. Because the Mayo yeah. Clinic, the Mayo Clinic does say that encephalitis can cause altered levels of consciousness and yeah. um, disorientation, and it can right. cause coordination issues, like muscular yes. issues in the hand. So mm -hmm. the the drawing does make sense because he thinks that he's doing it, but his muscles aren't doing it yeah. the way that he thinks he is. So that is does make sense. The the missing time and like the not and the memory part is the hallucination yeah. part is really the part that doesn't work yeah and it turns out that this particular one is a very like a more rare case of encephalitis mm -hmm. but nick just had the same case last year oh <laughs> he had a case of someone with this type of encephalitis so it was very uh interesting yeah me. okay not for them it did not it didn't go but it turned out very well for my knowledge base 
Um, but yeah, so Rachel was like, I don't know what they would do. So, cause I was trying to, of course, speculate as you do. Yeah. Um, and she was like, I think it's definitely more going to be neurology, neuro- neurological, like, because it's a physical element and you have all these physical reactions. And of course you have physical reactions with anything with your brain, like you were yeah. saying. Um, but it comes into more of like, you don't have as many of the psychological elements. It's definitely more of a physical and behavioral element that you're seeing with something like this. Um, you know, and so, but, and I think that, I think that the thing that you could use to, I guess, fix this fact that this doesn't really (laughs) medically line up the way doctors wanted to is that Will already had fucking issues. Like, it's not like it's a person who's perfectly mentally stable with right. nothing wrong with them, then having the issues of the brain, brain inflammation. He already has neuro, like, so, psych, psychological like, issues. He could have DID or schizophrenia along with his encephalitis. Yeah. Which, <laughs> and of course, if you're facing uh, something that is triggering your neurons to alter your mm-hmm. state of consciousness and your prior state of consciousness was already fucked, like. Yeah. Yeah. So it it's so, not it's not impossible, but it is interesting because it it doesn't quite mm-hmm. make sense. And it is interesting that both of them said the memory thing is like something they've never really yeah heard of or would know aside from having like it being that specific. Because hallucination, sure, that's something, and you know, lost time is something that happens. But like having those specific memories, like so consistently i guess is really the big thing i think that they were like this is really the thing that's not quite right which is kind Um, of probably why uh hannibal's trying to study him yeah oh 100 no question no question about that but yeah so i had a little science lesson in between our watching and recording um which was very fun i cornered them and made them talk to me about it they loved it (laughs) so then um we go over to Hannibal and Jack and Jack is like not worried enough about Will. He's like, no, we've talked about this. We're past the point. Like he said, he would be fine. It's like, that is all bad reasoning. Like everything you're saying right now is not working. Hey, here's this person that I already know is mentally unstable and they said they're fine. So I'm just going to take them at face value. Right. And even Hannibal's like, no, he's struggling. Like he's not okay. Like he's fine physically. Which I get also a lie, but also like lie, mentally but... not doing so great. Yeah. So, um, but then we go back to Will, our friend, not doing so well, who is at yeah. this dead girl's house. Right. And I think her name is Beth. We didn't learn about her name till way later, but I think it's Beth. Yeah. So we're at Beth's house and he has no problem with breaking this crime tape to go into the crime scene again that he's already ruined. That's fine um the bird is gone so i assume the bird has been let free that is where we've decided the bird has been let free or maybe her mom's like i don't know this bird has been replaced somewhere um and the electricity is out which i don't know how long it's been since this happened but usually the electricity doesn't go out that quickly i feel like yeah but that's fine again do what you are hannibal i guess um and so he checks the clock to mark his time and location because he's like this is triggering let's figure out where we're at and what we're doing and it is right. 10 36 and then he starts seeing what you would think is the dead woman under the bed but then she runs off so she's an actual person it's like is he seeing this is this in a hall- oh is this a hallucination or is this real life um and he goes to grab her and comes off with her skin that she is the skin she is like wearing or having on her body that is coming off of her body but it is not bleeding because it is just sloughing off which is one of my least favorite words and actions correct um but that is the way to describe this so that is what is happening um and the next thing we know he goes to touch base with his brain again because he is woken up in the woods and it is 1 17 a.m so we've lost a couple hours um but he's trying again to find this girl and he's telling them he's like you're alive like this is happening everything is real and i'm like is he telling them or is he convincing himself again because still right. at this point hard to tell 
Yeah. Um, we now have really dove, like, dove into this unreliable narrator. <laughs> like, yes, for sure. And uh, so then he immediately calls Beverly. And pff, apparently his bestie. And he tells her that she's like, why did you call like just me or like specifically me? And he's like, because I don't know if it's real. And she's like, oh, okay. He's like, I think all of these things happen. And I do think that they're real. This time I think they're real and not just a memory that I'm making up. Yeah. But I'm not sure. So I want you to kind of check out some things. Um, And so they start talking about it and she's like, it could be, you know, staff. It could be leprosy. Like these are all things that make your skin, you know, potentially come off without bleeding, like without scratching it off. Um, And then Will starts like describing her and he's like, you know, the thing is she can't see faces. And I have heard about that. And I meant to look up what it's called because I completely forgot. Um, But she can't see faces. So she doesn't really know what's going on all the time. And he says that she came, that everybody's like, why did she come back to this house then? And he's like, because she was trying to convince herself that she didn't do it. Which is also why what he was doing there was convincing himself that he was right, that it was someone else who had broken into the house. And it wasn't something he had done. Um, so, um, so there's a thing called prosopagnosia. I think that's the one I was thinking. And it's face blindness, like where you can't mm-hmm. recognize faces or facial features. Mm-hmm. But the I don't know that it what you actually see is what she Oh is no. I don't think so. I think it's usually like you just don't recognize the facial like features. You like don't, you can't like, see the similarity. So you see a face. Yeah. But you, you see a face, but like you, you yeah, but you couldn't recognize it. And like you couldn't really tell if somebody was smiling or frowning. Like your brain doesn't process what that yeah looks like like so it's not like blurred it's just not it's like when you read words in a different language and you have no fucking idea what they say it you still see it it's still there your brain just doesn't process it the same way it's supposed to right yeah yeah so again Hannibal doing what they want but it is a real thing that happens to people yes just not quite this way um and so then we go to Hannibal and Will and we are trying with the clock again because Hannibal's like, let's do this again. And it's, of course, still wrong because he still has encephalitis and still has not been fixed. Nothing's changed. So I don't know yeah, why no. we would expect it to be different. Um, but he starts talking about losing time again. He's like, I clocked it. Like, I know it was 1036 and then it was 117. And I don't know what happened in between, basically. Um, and Hannibal's like talking about everything and Will's like, by the way, you would never, like, write about me. Like, you would not write a research paper about me. Right. And <laughs> Hannibal's like, well, well, he was like, well, yeah, I absolutely would. Like, that's why we're here. But I wouldn't share it. And he was like, well, can you share it posthumously? And Hannibal's like, for you or me. And he's like, whatever one comes first. Right. It's like, okay, great. Excellent. Can't wait. Can't wait for that. Um, and then we're at Will's house and he is fitfully sleeping as he does. Um, and the killer girl is now outside of his house. And so had we any questions left in our brain, she is indeed there. Yep. Um, and so then we're back at, um, the FBI station and the killer's mom wanted to know that, that she was dead. Not if she was dead, that she was dead. She was like, this is happening, right? And we learned that the killer's name is Georgia. And then the dead girl's name is Beth. And they were at one point BFFs um, when they were in school until Georgia had to be removed from school because she had a lot going on mentally that was not adding up. At nine years old, she said she wanted to kill her mom. And she told her that she was already already dead. So it didn't matter, um, which is obviously a little incorrect crazy yeah and they were like well was she violent and the mom was like yeah sometimes <laughs> like okay cool cool right. and they're talking about it and they say that mental illness which this is a little true and a little sad yeah mental illness is less about finding solution the solutions and more about managing expectations which like managing solutions i guess is more of it because you're not going to cure it but 
you don't have to change how you like you can't just be like they kill people now like yeah find a medication or something to like make it to where they are a little more stabilized yes but but i think i think it is it is managing expectations in the sense that like you're never going to be normal quote unquote like it's not you're you're never gonna like go and be like okay well i found the thing that's gonna make my brain not be fucked anymore like right and like even if you find stuff it's like you have to manage the expectation of like what happens when they stop taking their medication or what happens on this medication that makes them different from the way they were before like yeah. there are a lot of things that go into it so like yeah it just sounded very extreme and like we can't change it so it's over like that's how it felt like she was saying it i don't think i don't know that she was and so i was like yeah, there's a few lines in between a few lines in between um and then Will and Jack have gone off and are talking about Miriam last. And he's like, um, he's putting on the responsibility on himself. He's like, I pulled her out of class. I brought her in when she didn't necessarily need to be. And now she is dead because of me. And he's like, and I've done the same thing to you. And I'm like, this is the first time you're saying something that, that makes Reasonable. sense. Reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, I also pulled you out. And he's like, but it's different. She was in the classroom. I'm teaching the class. Like, these are different things. And he's like, no, it's still the same. Like, you were not a f- in the field and now you're in the field. Like, these are things that didn't go over line. And- which, which I think is valid for Jack to admit that it's more similar than he wanted to, to believe yeah. in the first place. But also, he's still not doing it for Will. He's still doing it for himself. Yeah. And he immediately goes back and he's like, you know, I think, I think that this field work brings you stability. And I was like, that is 0% what is happening here. That is 0% how that works. But okay, Jack, if it makes you feel better, I guess. So now we're back at Hannibal's and him and the doc are having dinner um, because they're old friends. And he starts talking about Will's imagination and how he has this pure empathy and like all this stuff. And he's like, so like, there's a lot here to like study. And he's like, so we're just not going to tell him. And then he starts telling him, he's like, Will's my friend. Like, so if, if it gets too bad, like, cause he's like, what are you going to do as long as it keeps going? And he's like, well, if it gets too bad, I'll put him out of his misery. Like, I'm not just going to hold on to him when he's, you know, falling apart. I'm like, first of all, he's there. I think he's probably there. He's probably pretty yeah. miserable right now. Yeah. Not that killing people is good, but if that's your, but your, I don't, your, your I don't way. Know that, I don't know that he really even meant that he would kill him. I just said, I thought just felt like he thought he wouldn't address the medical concern until it got to the point where there was it was too bad to continue studying. Like, and whether that kill him, I think that would be his go-to. Cause I mean, at that point, even if he like puts him out of misery, tells him something wrong, it's too late to do anything about it. Like he's probably almost dead anyways, at that point. Right. So because it's very aggressive. Encephalitis is. Yeah. So Will and the doctor are now talking and he wants another MRI. He wants to start running more tests because he's like, I don't understand how there's nothing wrong with me. Like it can't just be psychological. There's so much going on. And then he puts him in the, in the MRI machine. And then when he comes back to life, he is alone and everything has been shut down. Like everything's turned off. Lights are turned off. He's completely alone. There's no medical staff. And there is, however, as he starts making his way down, the down the way blood on the door handle and so he does not contaminate the scene again (laughs) he does use like his shirt or something a jacket yeah it was his jacket and um to open the door handle and we see that the doctor has been murdered and it looked this is a little this is the most sensitive thing he looked a little bit like beetlejuice characters if you remember the beetlejuice guy with the big tongue that yeah. Came out. Well, it's exactly I mean, what he looked like. That's what I said about the the cello guy too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so we have a, a bit of a theme going. And then, of course, Will is concerned. He's done it because he's like, "There's literally no one else around. I lost yeah. time. I was the last person with him. It has to be me." Yeah. Um, and then Beverly is talking about like she's like, "You're so clean. Like you could not have done this and not had blood on you." Like, that's just not how that works. Um, And they start finding a lot of the same stuff that they found at Beth's house. And so they're like, this this isn't you. That wasn't you. Like, you're fine. And Will thinks that uh, 
Hmm. Oh, he thinks, I was like, what does the sentence mean? He thinks that uh, Georgia was trying to kill him, but because of her face blindness, killed the doctor instead because they yeah. were in the same place and just accidentally picked the wrong person. Yeah. Um, which is a valid A plus B equals C type thing. Um, yeah. So we go back to Will's house and he wakes up to the dog growling and grumbling and everything, make noises. So clearly Georgia's back and he leans over and realizes Georgia is under his bed. The fact that he most even terrifying. got out of his bed at that moment, I, absolutely not. Yeah, most terrifying thing. Most terrifying thing ever. Um, but he starts using the memory tricks now on her and he's like, because he knows that one of the things is that she does that she thinks she's dead, which is yeah. wild. And so she starts, he's like, your name is Georgia. You are here. This is what time it is. You yeah. are alive. You are alive. You're like, and she just looks at him and she was like, am I alive? Like, you can tell her that she's kind of like starting to think it through and it is grounding her a little bit more. Um, so crazy. So we go back to the hospital and we learn that Georgia has lost like pieces of her body. Like, and they were like, is she going to recover? But she has, whoops, she has Cotard syndrome. I meant to look up more about what that was, and I didn't. So that's what she has, though. And um, Hannibal says that he's now more worried about Will with all of this happening. Um, and we have a quick flashback to um, Georgia. Well, yeah, do you have more information? From yeah, me? so Cotard syndrome is um, a mental disorder where the person has a literal delusion that they have pieces of their body that aren't there or that they just don't exist. Like they genuinely believe that they are either dead or never existed. Um, um, 45% of patients with it like have denial of self-existence. So they like think that they are already dead. 55% of them have delusions of immortality where they think that they can't mm. die. Um, but most of the people who have it, they what they do die from suicide or self harm because they don't believe that they are actually capable alive. of dying because they're either already dead or immortal. That, exactly. I've heard that. I've heard the one about. I don't know that I've heard it called Cotard syndrome. Like I've never heard of that before. But I've heard of people who thought they were immortal due to like a deficiency in their brain. Yeah. Um, but I hadn't heard about the opposite one. Interesting. Um. Yeah, so then we do have a quick flashback before we end our episode where Georgia is walking in to the office that the doctor is in and Hannibal is killing the doctor. Um, and she does, and this is where we see that she's not seeing his face and he very calmly kills the doctor and then takes the scissors and hands them to her. And he's like, I don't think she's going to remember anything. But then we see this like look on her face and it's not a look of recognition because she doesn't see faces, but it is a look of like, she knows more than she, than we realize that she can. Yeah. Um, and that, that our friends is how we end this episode. Um, so I, I do have a couple of trivias for you. Um, oh, this is where I put it. Face blindness is called prosopagogia. Prosop prosopagnosia the one you looked up yeah perfect. so you nailed it you nailed it um buffet freud is stands for cold buffet um madchen in last so madchen is her name in this show george's yeah. last name and then last is her last name in dead like me and they both mean girl madchen is girl in german yeah and then last is girl in scottish so a little crossover there from our friend brian um let me look up i have a note that says look up the goofs on imdb so let's do that um doo -doo -doo -doo. yeah i, I also when, i love when my note says read this thing because i didn't want to write the whole thing but i wanted to talk about right and then i didn't pull it up because i didn't know my note said that anymore by the time i read the note um doo -doo -doo. We're almost there, I'm sure. Oops, I'm okay. sure. So when he's drawing the clock face for Hannibal, Will displays what the neurologist calls spatial neglect, which is more commonly known as left neglect, left neglect, 
And this can occur when the right hemisphere of the brain is damaged. The individual does not perceive items in the left field of vision, and it is not due to a lack of sensation. However, Will can perceive the left side of a clock or a watch, as is shown when he looks at his watch and tells the time. And so it would be an exceedingly rare occurrence for, ne for left neglect to be confined to expressive domains, as in Will's drawing the clock face, and not affect receptive ones as well. Therefore, this would be particularly true if, as the neurologist stated, the encephalitis encompassed nearly all of the right cerebral hemisphere. So left neglect is a thing, but it wasn't quite displayed here as well. Right. Um, there was an audiovisual unsynchronized. He tells him to draw the clock and he puts it as 713, but it's actually 716. Um, then can there was he drew the clock face. It had lines when he opened up the notebook. It didn't have lines when he handed it back over. So they used different notebooks for those scenes. Mm. Um, I saw then, the line. I saw the lines. Not in the next scene, though. Like when he's looking at the clock, there was a when Hannibal's looking at it, there's no lines. Oh, no. When Hannibal looked at it, I saw lines. I don't know if it maybe the first time it wasn't, but the second time it was because when Hannibal was looking yeah. at it the second time, I saw the lines where they were supposed to I be. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was maybe that. in the first one. Okay. Yeah. Um, And then at the dinner with the neurologist, they refer to him as a Birico as if it was a brand. The neurologist says, so we know how Iberico gets his pigs. In fact, Iberico is not a brand. It means Iberian, a special race, raised in freedom, and the most expensive, fed with acorns. Even Hannibal, a gourmet, doesn't seem to know what they are, and Iberico ham is never eaten with knife and fork. So yeah. that is a, a food issue. Um, yeah. And then the last... The thing was, the way Hannibal was talking about the Iberico pigs made it seem like he knew what he was talking about, except for that he was carving it off of the bone, which was not correct. Um, and, uh, but then the way, but then he didn't say anything like to correct the doctor when the doctor was talking yeah. about it, which probably had more to do with the fact that he didn't give a shit. Um, but, right. but I mean, he was getting ready to kill him. So what, what did it yeah. matter? Yeah. Um, yeah. And one last thing I forgot, I actually wrote about two different people, but because I wrote them on the wrong page, I don't know what I've done. Yeah. Um, because I wanted to write about Dr. Sutcliffe because it was his only episode. Yeah. But I also did write some notes about our friend Aaron Abrams plays Brian Zeller because it was oh. very short. And so I included yeah. those. Um, he is known for Blind Spot, The Lovebirds, and Children Ruin Everything. And he will come up again. Because he was also in two episodes of Stargate Atlantis. So hang in there. In three years, we'll tell you more about him. Um, maybe he'll have done some different things by then. But there is, it was hard to find him because there is indeed a Canadian rugby player named Aaron Abrams who is not him. And it tells you that when you go to his Wikipedia page, he is not, like, it makes a note that he is not the Canadian rugby player. Perfect. So um, had a hard time finding more. Um, so on that note, who do you want to punch in the face? Uh, Hannibal. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is the most punchable for sure. Um, but as as I do, I'm going to go with uh our doctor because you can't lie to your patients and tell them they don't have encephalitis when they have encephalitis. Correct. That's not that's not chill. No. Um, no. Ooh, then is your MVP. Oh, um, I am um, I'm gonna go with Beverly. Yep. <laughs> uh, because I don't know that there's anyone else you could say anything good about in this episode. Because like even some of the other ones, like sure, Georgia is recognized. Um uh like that Hannibal did something and she might be more to the mystery later, but like she also did murder a bunch of people. Right. Yeah. Uh, but no, Beverly is definitely a really good choice because she's trying very hard to like keep Will more uh, sane. Yeah. And um, she's just so matter of fact and also very, I just, yeah. Yeah. As annoying as she was in the beginning, we like her now. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah, so because you went with Beverly, I did go with Will. And he didn't do anything necessarily helpful, I guess. Yeah. But 
he really is trying to figure himself out and he is taking all of the proper steps that you should take when you think you're losing your mind. Correct. Um, short he, of committing himself, which is probably going to happen if I had to guess. Yeah, probably. Um, He should also probably, I don't know, get another therapist for like just like a oh my second God. opinion. Like yeah. I'm, I'm very confused as to how he still does not believe that that Hannibal's part of the problem. Like, because Hannibal keeps telling him he's fine, and he's clearly not fine. So, like, that's immediately when I would go get another therapist just for, like, shits. And maybe a second neurology opinion, like, just in case. Just in case. You know? Yeah. Ugh. But, yeah. So, I'm going to go with Will then. So, do you have any thoughts, feelings, predictions before um, we wrap it up? I I do think that... Um, something is going to come of Georgia knowing. Oh, for more. sure. Yeah. Um, and I, I do also think, unfortunately that you're probably not wrong that Will's going to end up being committed. Um, um, I think it's going to be voluntary too. I think yeah. he's going to be the one to do it. Yeah. I think that that could be, I don't know. Yeah. It um, seems like, Georgia is our arc that we were talking about yeah. that was going to come. I don't think I appreciate that Hannibal was wearing like a Patrick Bateman fucking jumpsuit to kill somebody. I really mm -hmm. don't like that. Um, but other than that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think you're right. Um, we're episode 10. There's 13 episodes. So we'll have this. We'll probably wrap it up next episode. If not the very beginning of episode 12 and then jump into our finales. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, in the meantime, if you have thoughts, feelings, um, I don't know, anything you want to talk to us about, you can email us, deathandaliens at gmail.com. You can find us on all of the social media at death and aliens. You can find me at cecloud13. And you can follow me everywhere at emkay underscore superstar. And we will see you for our next episode that apparently is going to be a big one of Sci-Fi Sunday. Bye. Bye.